Welcome to today's lesson on reading measurements. I am prompting you with a question. Um, what is the length of this blue rectangle? Now you may be asking yourself there, what, what's the difference between these answer choices? And I can tell you that there's actually a huge difference between these answer choices. I know that in math, you may learn that 6.3 is the same as 6.30 and 6.300. And while that's true in math class, it's not really true in science when we're talking about measurements. Uh, so today we're going to focus on reading measurements and make sure that we have the proper recording of our measurements. And we're going to come back to this at the end of the video. So just a recap here, this is a balance. We already know we've gone over the balance. It's used to measure mass in grams. And in this case, this is measuring three places after the decimal, which makes this a stellar balance. Next up, we have graduated cylinders, which measure volume in a cylindrical tube, and it's going to measure most of the time in milliliters. This is called a graduated cylinder because each of these lines is called a graduation. Thermometers are usually pretty skinny. Um, you can have them in digital or you can have them in... I, I guess this would be a standard thermometer, um, a graduated thermometer perhaps. They used to be filled with mercury, but we found out kind of the hard way that mercury causes brain damage. So they are now filled with dyed alcohol a lot of the time. Um, the liquid inside of the thermometer, in mine it's green, that um, it's actually kind of bluish. I don't know what color it is. Um, it expands when it's heated up. So if you put this in a sample of something that's hot, the um, liquid in the bulb is going to heat up and expand and it climbs up the tube. And when it's cold, the opposite is going to happen. It's going to contract and shrink down the tube. And that is going to um, tell you the temperature. Oftentimes, our thermometers measure in Celsius and then we convert them into Kelvin. It's very rare to get a Kelvin thermometer, although they do exist. There's also Fahrenheit thermometers. You would use that um, like if you have a Fahrenheit thermometer like this, this is the type that, I mean, not this, but the, the one that you may have is the one that you would put under your tongue when you think you might have a fever. That is um, going to be a Fahrenheit thermometer because Fahrenheit, that entire temperature scale is kind of based on body temperature. Celsius temperature scale is based on the boiling and freezing point of water. And the Kelvin temperature scale is based on atomic motion, which is why we use it in chemistry. All right, so anytime we are using a tool that is a narrow tube that's going to measure a liquid, like a graduated cylinder or a thermometer, we are going to have a meniscus curve form. Um, so the, the reasoning behind a meniscus curve. In a graduated cylinder, you're, let's say we're filling it with water. Water molecules look like this. And the white balls represent hydrogen atoms, and this red one represents an oxygen. And what happens is the water molecules kind of like make an L shape, and they will kind of spoon with each other. If you can imagine spoons in a drawer, they like rest one on top of the other. They are going to line up as like little sevens <laughs> or little L's, kind of like spoons, like the molecules will rest in each other. So we'll have this water molecule, and then we'll have another one that kind of sits um, not quite like this, but kind of like this. Okay. The kind of sort of, and when that happens, um, the water molecules like to stick to each other. And when they like to stick to each other, um, it's also common that they like to stick to other things. So water is going to try to stick to the walls of the graduated cylinder. It's the same reason why, um, when you get out of the tub or the shower, the walls of the shower will have water droplets on them for quite some time after getting out of the shower. It's because those water molecules like to stick to the wall. You need a towel to dry off because the water likes to stick to you. If you wash your hands with soap and water versus um, hand sanitizer, the water is going to stick to your hands. You need a towel to dry your hands. With hand sanitizer, it dries pretty quickly because it's mostly rubbing alcohol, which is not as sticky as water is. So what happens is you have the water in the tube and it tries to climb up the tube. And when that happens, it is going to kind of make a dimple. If you look at it like 
bird's eye view, there would be a dimple in the water because just along the glass, the water's trying to climb up. And this is the same way that water gets to the tippy top of a tree. Water is going to try to climb up all the little um, veins and the, the root system in the ground, but it's also going to climb up the trunk of the tree and then up into the branches and up into the leaves. The tubes get skinnier and skinnier as you go up the tree, which helps to move the water. When we're looking at a graduated cylinder straight on, you'll see a curve, and we call that the meniscus. Sometimes in a thermometer, not all of them, I'm noticing that my thermometer here, like I am not really seeing a meniscus. If anything, it's curving down. Some thermometers curve up, some curve down. It kind of depends on the liquid that's in there. I think the, um, the dye that's in here might be canceling out the want for it to curve up and the dye wants it to curve down because my thermometer looks very flat. Maybe a tiny bit downward, but like not really enough to tell. Um, if the liquid is curving up, that means it's trying to avoid the glass tube. So that means that um, whatever material is in there is, um, it, it doesn't like the glass and it wants to stick to itself. So when it comes to the meniscus curve in our tools, scientists who made these tools already accounted for the fact that the meniscus curve exists. So they made the tool um, anticipating that this was going to happen. So in a graduated cylinder where we're going to get the curve down meniscus, you are going to read from the bottom of the meniscus. So this meniscus curve, the bottom of it, hits 60 milliliters on the dot. If we read from the top, we might get like 62. 62 is the wrong answer. This tool was designed knowing that the meniscus was going to happen, so you're going to read from the bottom. Anytime you get a meniscus that is going to curve upwards, you read from the tippy top of the hill of that meniscus curve. But the question is how many decimal places go on the back of your measurement? So if you were to read a standard tool that wasn't digital and you had to come up with the measurement yourself, you are going to follow this convention. You are going to report all of the known digits plus one estimated digit. And the question is what are known digits and what are estimated digits? Well, a known digit we can kind of more or less say is the number that everybody in the room is going to get the same. Um, no one is going to come in and say that this is 70 milliliters. Everyone's pretty much going to agree it's 60. Some of us might say 59, but we're all pretty much there. Um, and then the, the estimated digit is... <laughs> The estimated digit is the one that is going to vary from person to person. So if you are um, doing an experiment and you read the data and then your lab partner reads the data, you may say 60.0, your partner may say 60.2. That's okay. That's going to be a difference in the way that your vision works, really. Um, but when we follow these conventions, all of the scientists reading your data know that you um, would be an agreement on the 60 milliliters, and then this is going to be the human error, right? It's the one that you kind of estimate. The estimated digit, by definition, is one digit beyond the capability of the tool. So we're going to flip back here, and if we look at this tool, uh, the graduated cylinder, we have markings for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, but we want to know. Um, what each individual graduation stands for, not just the ones that are like noted. So we, if we went through and counted all of them, each of these, excuse me, each of these lines represents two. It goes two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Just the tens are marked so that the whole graduated cylinder is not cluttered. Um, so our individual graduations go by twos. And twos fall in the ones place, if we're talking place value. So that means that the tool's capability is to the ones place. One digit beyond the ones place would be the tenths place. So for that reason, our known digits are all of the digits up to the ones place, and then the estimated digit is one beyond the capability of the tool going to the tenths place. 
here we are in my kitchen. I just want to show you what I mean by a meniscus curve in real life. Um, reading graduated cylinders can be kind of difficult, especially the ones that I'm going to show you, but I want to make sure that you feel super confident in how to read them. All right, first off, I want to show you this thermometer. Um, just that thermometer I was showing you back in the lesson, this little rubber piece is just to prevent it from rolling. If this were popped off, then this baby could roll and potentially fall off your counter, which you don't want because then you're gonna have no thermometer anymore. So we have this little rubber piece to prevent it from rolling. And I'm just gonna plop that in this mason jar because I wanna read the temperature of that sample of water. And while that is kind of calibrating, or um, while it's reading the measurement, you might be able, it, I'm in a mason jar, so it's kind of wiggly and hard to see, but um, you can see that the alcohol level in that thermometer is dropping. There's some ice, or there, yeah, there's still ice cubes in here. Um, so this is pretty cold. The room temperature started out about 25, I wanna say. I didn't actually take a look at it, but you can see that the temperature is dropping. So we're gonna come back to that in a second. We are going to read these graduated cylinders first. So here I have two graduated cylinders. Um, we have one with, I've just put some um, food coloring in here so it's a little easier to read. We have this one with purple and then this guy has blue. This is a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. Sorry for the wiggly. <laughs> right here we have a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. Um, the top measurement here is 50, that's how I know. And when we read graduated cylinders, we want them to be level on the counter and we don't wanna read them like this, how we're pointing down. We wanna read them at a flat level. Um, we also don't wanna pick them up because we will wiggle the water level back and forth. And that's not great either. It's important to find a place that has good lighting and um, with a good solid background. This black is pretty good. I have another counter that's a light gray, which is very speckled and hard to read on. So anytime we do measurements, we're gonna do them from here on my black countertop whenever we can. You may also notice that this graduated cylinder has two measurement scales. One of them is counting the numbers down, like backwards. And then we also have them counting up forwards. If you have a double graduated cylinder, you're gonna wanna use these most often. This is to tell you like how much is been removed. Backward scales are kind of silly and kind of useless. Both of these <laughs> graduated cylinders have the backward scale though. This one also, it is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder um, with a zero to 10 and then a 10 to zero. You're gonna wanna use this scale most often with the highest number at the top. And now you may be able to see the meniscus here where the water level is kind of climbing up in various places. Um, I was just wiggling this one around. So there are some droplets up in the tube and I poured it kind of splashy, but you can see that this water level is not flat. Um, if this happens, you can kind of like bang it a little bit. Um, doesn't always work, but you can give it a try. <laughs> Um, and now we're gonna read the level of this graduated cylinder. So I'm gonna try to get close without making you seasick and give us a good focus here. All right, so it's kind of difficult to see. Looking between the 30 and 35 makes it a little bit easier. Um, between 30 and 35, there are four lines. So the unlabeled lines are 31, 32, 33, 34, with the big line at 35. So now we're gonna look at where the water level is, and that is not quite 40. It's between 30 and 45. So the first line that's not labeled is 36, then 37, then 38. And we are all going to agree that this level is 38 and then some. So um, it's a little bit more than halfway between 38 and 39. So I would maybe say that this is 38.8, but that's as far as I can go. Reason being is that this thermometer measures by, um, sorry. <laughs> the reason being is that this graduated cylinder's graduations are in the ones place, so I can estimate to the tenths place. So I would say this is 38.8, maybe 38.9. Um, but it's definitely not 39 yet. It hasn't hit that, that line just above it. Now this graduated cylinder 
is the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, and it is measuring um, labeled by whole number, but if you actually look and count the lines in between, um, each of those lines is one tenth, and then that line that's kind of jutting out in the middle is the 0.5 line. That happens a lot of the time where the halfway mark is a little bit bigger or maybe more bold than the other lines. So right here, our level is, and you can take a second to pause and determine the measurement. Okay, I wanna say that this is seven point, and this one's kind of frustrating because the meniscus is not curving evenly. This could also be that this is a very old graduated cylinder and it's warped. That is very much a possibility. Glassware does warp over time, especially if you're measuring like very hot stuff in here, it can warp, um, which is why we don't usually like to put hot stuff in a graduated cylinder. But I would say that this is 7.62. Um, so that seven line is this one right here that's labeled, and then that one that's jutting out just above the seven is 7.5. And then you can see that the water level is higher than the 7.6. So we're gonna estimate how far it is between the, the 0.6 and the 0.7, and I wanna say that it's about 0.2. And you may say that it's 7.63, 7.64, 7.61. That's okay. Uh, as long as your measurement is going to the hundredths place, because our tool is measuring to the tenths place, you have to estimate one digit beyond. Last up is this thermometer. I've just put the thermometer in um, some water that I just put two ice cubes in. They now have completely melted. Um, so this is somewhere between zero and 10. I mean, you can kind of see that through the mason jar, but I want to take this out. It's going to warm up very quickly because it's going to take me some time to focus, um, the camera on the thermometer, but we are going to do our best to read this quickly. This thermometer is raising quickly. I would say right now it's about nine Celsius. You can actually see it climbing. Now it's hitting 10, um, Typically, I would want to leave this thermometer in the sample when I was reading it, but because it's in that very um, wiggly mason jar with lots of designs on it, we got to be quick. Um, right now, we're at 11, and this is measuring in the ones place. Each of those graduations represents one degree Celsius. So like right now, it's 11.5. If it falls exactly on the line, like right now, it's 12. The reading's not 12. It's actually 12.0. So going back to this question, which is the length of this block, um, we know that it's 6.3 something, at least. The question is, how many zeros do we add to our measurement? Because this tool measures to the tenths place, our recorded measurement must be one digit beyond the tool. So if this goes to the tenths place, our measurement must go to the hundredths place. And if we're falling exactly on the line and we're saying it's exactly 6.3, it really means our measurement is 6.30. The zero tells you dead on the line, a 0.1 or a 0.2 is just above a line, a 0.8 or a 0.9 is just below the line. And that is how we determine how to read our tools. So make sure to comment any questions you have below the video in the comment section. Subscribe for the next lesson. You don't want to miss it. And I'll see you there. Bye.